guys do have any questions regarding this today's session. Okay. One second, guys. There is one more guy should join. One minute. One moment. Okay, he's joining. Uh, guys actually today one more guy joined uh, manually so he want me to brief uh, existing thing I will high level I will give once again so then we'll go ahead uh, today's topic again so the continuation of uh, male expression so actually uh, Rohan what we discussed these days so last uh, four days so first class we discussed about that uh, any point studio so this is the any point studio how to configure the any point studio then what are all the options in the any point studio how they build the any point studio actually this any point studio uh, you know the eclipse is the base version of this on top of this uh, meals of people implemented uh, some of the options uh, how they want that based on their requirement so that we discussed and again what are the what are all the options we discussed actually after that how to create the meal project then how many ways so there are uh, three ways of uh, I mean three types of projects we can create it using this then uh, there is a domain project and meal project there is a any point uh, uh, I mean there is one more way so using RAML so you can create the project actually there are three ways you can create it I mean three types of projects also can create one more project type is so domain a normal project there is one more so if suppose we have an already existing connectors if you want create a new connector so suppose so in worst cases the uh, client preferred so community edition actually here we have a two editions one is community edition and another one is there is enterprise edition if you go for enterprise edition so whatever the connectors we have all the connectors it will support us but if you go for community edition so then you have to build so some of the connectors like based on our requirement suppose for example salesforce connector i want to uh, integrate between the salesforce and whatever the front end like might be jQuery or else might be Java portal or else any angular JS kind of thing so I want to communicate it so I want to uh, integrate between the GUI and the Salesforce and then if you are in a enterprise edition so then simply you can drag and drop that enterprise edition connector that is nothing but Salesforce and you can simply configure it but whereas in if you are working in a community edition so then it won't support it actually some of the connectors it won't support it for example so Salesforce so that time you know so client want us to write the code uh, to create an a connector so this is a worst case guys so just I'm trying to highlight that one so generally whoever prefer the meals of middleware so client will prefer enterprise edition only why because I will tell you the reasons also so actually here so whoever want to uh, this type of middleware so they will look into high visibility guys high visibility in the sense so 24 by 7 support they will expect so support in the sense 
uh, actually so we are working on this middleware so they will you they should use it the mule servers right mule servers so in production generally people will go genuine version right so so if they want genuine version they will go for uh, enterprise edition and then any issue happened in the servers guys that is a high visibility servers so any issue happened in this or else cloud environment also if you go for cloud also so immediately they will respond guys if you go for enterprise edition so that is one kind of uh, support so then so after taking the enterprise edition they will share the username and password guys so whatever the latest things happen whatever the latest versions happen using that uh, user id password you can download it they will give a particular location actually so from that location you can download it but if uh, if normal community edition you can just try to download from the google but uh, you know uh, they won't give any support if you are a community edition and then so if you are interpret edition so immediate support is there if anything goes wrong in the server in your servers or some of the characters whatever the characters suppose connector is not behaving properly we can raise a ticket so we can, we can get uh, some kind of support actually right so if you if you are found any if you are find any bug kind of thing you can also post it actually so they will rectify immediately so so that kind of support is there that is a high visibility thing and then so here uh, most of the built-in connectors are available guys so that is nothing but trendy connect trendy connectors we can call it as so trendy connectors in the sense whatever the new technology in the market so they are uh, immediately they are preparing the connector guys so for this almost all for all the languages integration we have a connectors guys okay if there is no connector also there is a feasibility suppose we have a uh, database connector like mysql and then oracle and then uh, mongodb so three databases we have a direct connector apart mm -hmm. from that so in that in in the market we have a nosql sql we have different types of databases in the market so for that also we have a generic database connector using the generic database connector we can uh, speak to other databases also coming to nosql database so nosql in the sense there is no structure guys generally sql in the sense structured query language right nosql in the sense there is no st proper structure like for example our server logs like hadoop guys so what they will do in the hadoop they simply dump our logs into the hadoop right so they will use some tools they will uh, prepare properly then uh, so we can uh, talk the type of NoSQL also using there is a connector called Cassandra. Cassandra also uh, NoSQL database and again MapRDB and then Hadoop HBase. HBase is the one of the connector to talk with Hadoop. So that is also NoSQL database. So like that we have a so so many trendy connectors guys. So we are uh, so trying to avoid almost uh, uh, code actually. And then just simply we can configure it. So whatever the connector we can drag and drop it, we can configure it. And then see, uh, in generally clients will expect like big clients like Cisco and all. So they want us to write a Java code guys because if you are using existing connectors, the performance won't hit it guys. So if you write your Java code, your own customized injection code compared to existing thing, you know so they they build the connector already so with well error handling and all so if the connector is there we should use the connectors and whatever the uh, existing things like either might be filter whatever it is so they want us don't want us try to uh, custom code so because so there is a chance to hit a performance that's why so we have to avoid the almost uh, all uh, uh, custom code guys custom code in the sense there is a java whatever the technology not only java guys here is one more advantage suppose
sorry guys I'm back uh, suppose uh, what I'm trying to say it's a developer friendly also suppose I am familiar with Java code so suppose some other familiar with uh, some kind of groovy script right so so whatever they want to achieve it they can write the groovy script also somebody expert in the Python script so they just drag and drop the Python component they can write the Python script actually like that it's kind of developer friendly so whatever the technology you are familiar so the type of uh, uh, component you can drag and drop it you can you can achieve that part actually so that's what uh, so that's why MailSoft is more popular than uh, uh, other ESBs in the market we have so many ESBs but uh, so this have so many features so that too it's a freeware guys so some of the clients like UK <coughs> UK clients so they won't prefer any enterprise editions thing actually they will prefer previous so if you go for community edition so most of the connectors will support whatever the connector not support so for that so there is an option called dev kit guys using the dev kit we have to add that plugin we can create our own custom connectors so with the so whatever the technology or family generally these all the connectors whatever we can see in the palette this is a mule palette in the palette we can see the connectors and scopes and uh, filters and all these are implemented by java only guys if you try to open the source code of this we'll get to know in the google you will get it guys so the source code of this each and every component so if you see everything is in java only so what so that's why if you are familiar with Java, so but so you can get the things more easily actually. And then uh, if you know about Spring also, it more add-on actually. Because so generally, if you are aware at Spring, Spring is based on the XML guys. Everything based on the XML right in the Spring. So here also, if you see here, whenever you just drag and drop in the, whenever you try to drag and drop in the components into the palette <coughs> into the palette so in the back end automatically xml is generated <laughs> suppose you are familiar with xml so then we can directly write the code here we'll get the suggestions also if we just uh, use control space bar so we'll get a suggestions like uh, so what do you want to see you can see this almost all things are we are getting actually no need to drag and drop it actually yeah. after a few days once you are familiar with the so this drag and drop and again how to build the flows and all you can directly write the configuration xml i mean in the back end only you can write it actually no need to drag and drop it right if you are familiar with the, all these things so why i'm saying here some of the clients that's exclusively for uk clients guys so they won't prefer even any point studio also so here uh, they have a tool called IntelliJ guys I mean I was facing actually IntelliJ that is one of the tool so that have more features actually but this feature is not the drag and drop feature okay so while using that IntelliJ you have to write the code in the XML actually so there is no drag and drop feature so that time you know so you have to write the code in the XML so that's why so try to get the things done in the way of uh, you know so first try to drag and drop the things once you are get familiar with that so then try to implement in the back and side only directly so you can use that so you can use that uh, control space bar you get the suggestion you can use it whatever the component you want and then whatever the uh, attributes inside you can you can keep all these things actually okay so that was the thing high level mm, so rohan do you have any open questions we'll discuss after that i will go first day what we discuss second day what we discuss i will go that way so do we have any open questions so go ahead we'll discuss we'll clear the things not only rohan anybody so either santosh anybody have open questions so we'll discuss clearly so after that we'll go ahead
can you please cover the study session about my okay sure definitely hope you are good actually uh, just go through once again all the recordings if you have any else uh, doubt or question just ping me in whatsapp and discuss so we'll clear the things okay so thank you and then coming to yesterday's session or else so first day we discussed that any point studio second day we are trying to create a new example then uh, we try to the post the request with some json content json data will receive it so we'll play accordingly with the flow actually flow is nothing nothing but a message uh, process right combination of message process we'll try to add set payload in the set payload we are trying to pass dynamically data and first uh, hard coded so after that uh, dynamically i passed it some of them were uh, some of them asked actually how to pass dynamic data how to receive it and all so i tried to pass the dynamic data and i receive it mm, here that time i tried to convert into the map guys so here uh, i was trying to highlight actually uh, the favorite mule java object is the favorite mules of java object is map guys so people uh, i mean almost all the people are so trying to convert the data into map because you know so for receiving the data uh, in the map it is easy actually because simply you can pass the key will get the value so that's why wherever possibility is there simply will convert into the map so then we will pass the key will get the value if there is possibility if there is no possibility there is a using json also you can there is a syntax from the json also we we'll get it okay that was the highlighting actually that's second day and then third day also we discussed some more examples and then this fourth day i guess mule expression okay so coming back to the mule expression so actually what was the purpose of the mule expression here why they introduce separate language in the mule soft so actually so earlier people are using java code to communicate between the components guys between the components in the sense between the message process okay so but in the java <coughs> in the java we don't have a uh, built-in method for each and everything guys but compared to other languages we have a built-in methods right but for each and everything we don't have a built-in method guys so some of them are we get stuck we need to write some customization code suppose for example uh, i want to fetch uh, from the substring right so there is a string we are getting some statement or a string out of string i want to get some substring so there's a built-in method right so client want to write a more customization in that right so for that we need to write some customization actually so for for that worst cases the built-in methods are not available right so that's why these people are introduced this type of mel so mule expression language so that was the purpose actually that was the back end uh, so thing background so once introduce this mail expression on the basis of you know jsp guys java server pages in the jsp uh, you know after receiving the business layer whatever the object we are getting from the business layer you know, jsp in the sense java server pages that is a part of the advanced java guys you know so in the jsp it's like a uh, you know it's a web page so in the web page after receiving the data from the back end or else whatever wherever it is so we need to show the data on the jsp page how we'll show it suppose i want to show some employee object in the employee object we have employee id employee salary employee name employee email id like that how we'll take it uh, there is an object employee object object dot id object dot name you can keep like this using jsp actually so same here also you will use same thing guys we have a we have a uh, like in the java we have a object as a super class for all the classes in java 
so here there is a message message is the super class paradi all the classes in mails of guys i mean so everything is available in the message actually i will try to show the message structure also so i was explaining i guess so again i am trying to show that trying See this guys, this is the message structure. We have a message object, okay. Under the message object, we have a uh, header payload and again attachment variable and again exception payload. So these are all the parts in the message. In the header again, we have a inbound property, outbound property. So inbound property in the sense, so actually we are uh, so trying to publish our APIs, right? So once you're done, you are trying to publish your API to outside. So then whoever consuming us, so they will send some, some headers actually. Like for example, suppose I will try to do Postman. If you see this uh, in this URL, so you can see these three headers. There is a content type and then some username and then password. These are, not, these are all nothing but a headers actually. So these are uh, coming from the client perspective. We were consuming our APIs, right? So this is the REST API. We are trying to publish REST API. People are trying to consume it, but we are expecting that time some of the headers. So they have to send as a uh, header. Then we can treat it as an inbound property, guys. So that is a part of the header. So one more thing here, inbound property is a immutable, guys. We can't change in the future, like string in the Java. String in the Java, uh, uh, it's immutable, right? We can't change it. So here also, inbound properties. It's immutable, you can't able to change it, but outbound property you can change it. Outbound property in the sense, whatever you we will create it, will post the whatever the endpoint it is. Endpoint in the sense, so this is the inbound, right? Whatever I'm trying to show it, so that is nothing but inbound. So in case in some of the cases, so we need to consume some other APS, right? So people are trying to expose APS, we will consume that API. So, mail, so in this case, mail is a publisher. Maybe based on our requirement, sometimes in the uh, in the process here two parts here in the flow we have a two parts. This is a source. This is a processor. So in the processor, so we need to consume some other APIs, right? Based on our requirement. So that time it will act as an endpoint, guys. So I told you, uh, this is a, a HTTP connect will act as a both inbound as well as outbound so if we keep inbound so some of the options are uh, we can see different options in the endbound if you drag and drop it so options get different actually right so uh, that's why here so if you talk to the uh, endpoint so whatever the inbound properties right so after that it becomes an outbound property guys after reaching the endpoint end so that is the difference between inbound property and outbound property and then payload guys so if you see here that is also part of the message payload payload in the sense so whatever the user will post us or else consumer will post the data suppose consumer want to create something in the target system suppose for example he want to create an opportunity in the salesforce system right so for creating an opportunity you should send some payload Payload in the sense opportunity information, opportunity ID, opportunity name or quantity kind of thing. You will send it. So what we need to do as a middleware guy, we'll take the data, how target system will expect. We need to convert it. We need to post into the Salesforce. So that time, you know, so we'll get some data from the user perspective. So that is nothing but a payload guys. So in, in, in flow, always the payload is moving. Okay so that was happening so that is nothing but a payload payload is nothing but a data 
next one is variables so we have a three types of variables here in our palette so we have a flow variable and session variable and record variable we not yet discuss that variable we'll discuss there is a separate session we discuss only variables so we'll discuss the scope also so which one is uh, flow variable scope is what and uh, session variable and then when we'll use it each variable we'll discuss that is also part of the message only so and then attachment and then exception payload attachment in the sense user can able to send attachment also we have a component called directly attachment so we have an attachment so we have a remove attachment also once you get the attachment i want to remove it so there is a remove attachment also the inside attachment only there is a remove option is there you can use that so that is attachment and then exception payload once you've done the flow so we have a uh, another part called error handling guys we not and discuss this error handling so uh, you know so that is also part of the uh, message only so based on that so message you can get it all these things message dot payload you can write it message dot uh, get caused by what was the reason it is any error goes any flow go, in, in our flow getting some error i want to know the what exception it is what error it is that is also part of the message only so that's why here whatever we are going to write the uh, mule expression you can mention it as a message dot because everything is there under message object dot here message object dot you can write it okay that was the thing so background of that so in the first example i just drag and drop the inbound connector so that is nothing but a http here in the http we can observe many options are there here so so what we need to do so initially this this configuration should should not be there guys what we need to do so we have to click the plus symbol so here i have already added so that's why here appear the configuration if it is not there click plus and add it so now i am trying to edit it there is a one more pop up will come when you click the plus so here we have a two options guys either it's a http or it's https if you want to expose as a https then you have to choose it and you have to give it and then so for that certificates and all required and then so now so http is a default i just mentioned as a host name is local host so now i am in a local host suppose in future i want to move some other environment like dev worlds test or else qa and then finally uh, stage production kind of thing so we should not hard code anywhere else guys so but here i hard coded so we'll discuss that area guys there is a environment specific properties that there using that environment specific we'll try to avoid all these things suppose now i am in local host i will push to the uh, dev environment it should not work right so that's why we should you know so we have to write so dynamically each and every property we should not hard code anywhere else so that type of provision how to provide it actually environment specific i i simply create a uh, mule archival file here i simply deployed in the dev environment it should work we should not change anything in the code so that way how to provide the uh, provision we'll see that environment specific how we'll achieve it but as of now we can hard code it Sorry guys, I have a bit cough and cold. Please bear with me. And again here, so there is a host. So as of now, I just keep a local host. Or else in this place we can pass a remote host also, right? So then port number. 
so this is uh, it should be thank you it should be uh, so depend on uh, you know it should be unique guys it should not use uh, not only your uh, meal any point studio other services also like uh, you if you are using skype right so every application will run some uh, port number actually in your local environment right in your uh, machine so then you have to pass uh, unique value this one otherwise you know so we'll get uh, issue like address already bind that kind of error will get it actually if you run same port number with other applications or else so within mailsoft if you are using uh, suppose I, I just opened two mail studios parallelly right so already running with the same port number in the other uh, uh, any point studio so then we face that issue called address already bind so the type of error will get it so we can check it and we can change the port number so but these two are mandatory fields host and uh, port number so there's the other one base path is a it's an optional field guys so because here one more path is here this is mandatory fields at least we have to keep slash otherwise it won't accept um, or else star we can keep it any symbol expected or else we can keep it path actually so here there is a base path and path the difference is if you observe any url some common feature common things are there if you see here this is the protocol https after dev id diam.compicom.com there is a host name after that if we see uh, until here until here open idm endpoint ssp plugin login this is <coughs> common for all the request files after that if you see maybe there is a chance to change it right so whatever the common base path right that common base path you can keep it here guys you can keep it here and then uh, whatever the changes there is a possibility to change it right that you can keep it dynamically here I told you it should not hard code any, anywhere else even here also it should not hard code it so we'll get it dynamically we'll keep the outside and we'll load it uh, dynamically and then if you keep it both the locations right in the path and base path the priority is this guys starting with this and then next that will add it hope you guys are clear what i'm saying so if you add both the locations the priority is http localhost after adding this base path next path will add it actually right so that is the thing happened here next one is allowed methods allowed methods in the sense so we have a, a frequently used methods are this guys there is a post get and put and delete these are the frequently used methods so you can pass which method you want it use it suppose your flow is uh, creating an opportunity something like that uh, so then we pass it as a post or else i want to get the existing opportunities from the salesforce then we keep a get then i want to update already existing property existing salesforce uh, opportunity i want to update it so then you can keep it a put if you want to delete it you can keep it delete so if if you are not passing anything it will allow any method if you restrict it you can restrict it and so there is optional one here so next one is these are add headers and all so that is not the uh, we'll see that one also had this as of now that's not required so next one is here i just drag and drop that uh, so the payload so here is i'm trying to, uh, to i mean tell about this uh, email expression you can observe here guys here what i'm trying to do it so there is a username so user will enter via query parameters through query parameters user enter the username I want to read that username so query parameter in the, in the sense if you see here this action equal read after question mark this is a total URL right it's a query string in the query string after question mark we can enter multiple query parameters also right so with the separation of ampersand symbol like uh, I'll show you that one also if you see here in this particular URL I'm trying to pass many query parameters until this until this base path with protocol and again host name after that if you see so many things i'm trying to pass as a query parameters rearm client id secret id scope and again redirect uri so many things i'm passing here 
I want to read one of them from the uh, query strip. So then this is the syntax guys, message dot. You can click, keep, keep the dot here. You can see multiple things under the message. So this type of suggestions will get it guys. So which one you want to use it? So here I want to fetch inbound properties. You can see this inbound properties. So whatever the query parameters are else maybe URI parameters, all are coming under inbound properties. So from the inbound properties, right? So from the inbound properties, I want to fetch this query params, HTTP query params. We have to pass it. This is the syntax here. So HTTP query params dot username. So if you not keep this username, we'll get list of query parameters. If you see here, I'm I'm using so many query parameters in this, in this particular thing, right? I don't want a whole query parameter. I want to fetch particular query parameters. You can pass the key because you want query parameter is nothing but a key value pair, right? So then pass the key, then get the value. So here I'm passing username, then I will get that term. So value, value of that username. Okay, so I will try to show in the debug mode. I will try to deploy this thing and again I will try to show the debug mode. I will show about that uh, meal evaluate expression dialog also. So right click on your project or else you can right click on here also guys. So debug project week one. So I'm trying to run in a debug mode. So before that here if you observe there is a red you know, symbol is there here right. Because it's a uh, I already added a total breakpoint that is nothing but a breakpoint. I want to stop there. I don't want to execute it um, so without uh, uh, our knowledge. I want to stop there and step by step I want to see it actually what happened in the meal flow. So that's why I kept a total breakpoint here. If we keep it here, so then it will get stopped there. After you were, you were pressing the F6, F6 means the shortcut key. So step by step or else you can use F8. F8 is for uh, resume. So you can use the commands then you can uh, go ahead and next level and you can see the output of this. Okay, so I try to deploy this application. So let's get deployed. And deployed successfully. The status is deployed. So then, how we'll talk with this? So based on your input, guys based on your uh, HTML configuration, sorry, HTTP configuration, localhost 8081, the greet one. Let's try to talk with that. It's a listener, right? We post the request. HTTP. So this is the one guys because here so the great one is the what we call this one path right I got the request I just click yes observe here so the debug stopped here this is a get request guys that's why I tried through browser if it is any posting we have to use third-party uh, plugins called postman or else advanced rest client kind of thing we have to use it and you have to post the data but through browser you can't able to post the data only get request you can try it in this particular case we're not uh, getting any data from the user perspective so that's why you can see the payload is null guys all payload we are getting okay. if you are getting anything from the user perspective you can see this uh, payload here and one more thing here i'm trying to show highlight the uh, mule debugger things guys so anything goes wrong so in your flow, suppose some exception is happening, then you, here exception is there, no? as of now null is there. If anything goes wrong in your flow, so then here exception will uh, give the value, what was the reason it is, right? What type of exception that is. You know, based on that, uh, we can find it what was the exception it is then we can rectify accordingly so then coming back to the right side you can see this inbound 
variables outbound session record so many things are there so first we'll see the inbound properties observe here so this are, I, I'm getting so many inbound properties even user is not sending I'm not sending anything I'm sending only HTTP query params so that is nothing but only a username I'm passing username mule I'm passing apart from that you can see so many inbound properties right so these are all inbound properties only what was the path you are using what was the remote address what was the relative path what was the query string so many things are even what was the user is in it it's a browser thing so many things are getting right so these are all by default we'll get it guys so next one is so our requirement is we need to read this one of the query parameter out of this maybe so as of now we are getting only one query parameter you can see the size one actually if you want to so if maybe if you pass more parameters see the size may be increased after that if you want to read your thing there is a key guys it's kind of everything is here key value pair so for that so here I directly written the syntax here suppose you are not aware of the syntax so then here right side in the debug mode so whenever you are in a debug mode so then evaluate meal expression will be the small symbol is there here right side corner you can observe here x plus y equal question mark the evaluate meal expression control shift l is the shortcut key so click this the pop-up will come here you can see the pop-up here okay so ash square bracket observe here uh, whatever the meal expression will write it right so that should be between the Ash square bracket guys so the by default is there our requirement is what I want to read the query parameter let's see so message is the first object right under that message we have an inbound property when you are typing will come guys suggestions inbound properties of what you want to get it so I want to get it HTTP query params so it won't come guys try to type it HTTP dot query dot params. You can see the list of query parameters. If you avoid this, uh, I will try to remove this HTTP query params. Let's see what we we'll get it. See this, guys. I'm getting almost 18 inbound properties. Out of 18 inbound properties, I want to get only HTTP query params. I'm just giving control Z here. So, Okay, you can see this only HTTP inbound properties I mean that to query query parameters you can observe here there is a key is me or username and you can value is me I want to read that uh, username you pass that username you get only value right this is the syntax if you are not aware it right you can use this mule evaluate expression dialog so you can you can keep same syntax in the any component it will support whatever you framing this uh, syntax right you can paste simply the syntax there right so copy this and again escape it guys the dialogue automatically uh, gone if you keep uh, if you press any button okay so then keep here whatever the syntax you prepared there you can keep it in the so mule design you can keep it here as it is right whatever you prepare it right so same thing you can copy it so but it should be in the ash uh, square packets within the square packets we have to keep it okay i just remove this so apart from that whatever the value you are getting i'm trying to add that hello also hello so then whatever the value you are getting right that should be dynamic right so the dynamic value i'm attached to i'm before that i keep a static code that is nothing but hello so then it should display hello mail right whatever you are passing so it will display accordingly okay i'm just uh, so next step guys if you want to do step by step there is f6 or else f8 i'm just clicking f8 you can see the output in the browser hello mail hope you guys are clear so this is a way to write the mule expression syntax guys that is the first example i told you in the study and again coming to the next one so there is a choice guys there is a choice okay so here so HTTP component is same so the I mentioned maybe 
or base path is different why because here I am something should be different so between each configuration because I so if you observe within a mule expression I mentioned multiple flows almost six flows I mentioned that's why something should be different uh, between the HTTP configuration right so that's why I changed the uh, what we called so base path I changed it whatever the path it is I changed this is a grid too right but uh, so configuration mostly same see this 8081 and then localhost just now I told you if the same address will use it the address already bind that kind of error message will get it but here it's, it's not the same actually there is a, some changes there actually the path is different if this is also grade one it will give it actually this is not great one it's a great one it's a different so that's why I won't get any issue the somewhere else the base path should be different so next one is there is a component called choice guys so choice coming under uh, you know so it will coming under uh, route the message actually so it's kind of uh, you know, flow control that will come under flow control so the choice this is a choice component so when I will go for choice component it's kind of if else condition guys so in the Java we will use if condition is true then we will do something or else do something else right that kind of thing we will go for choice component okay so here I am trying to open the configuration of the choice component choice uh, uh, flow control observe here guys so here um, I will try to drag and drop the uh, empty components let's try to I'll try to explain that so here I try to drag in one more choice component after this observe here guys by default we will get like this by default so uh, try to comparing here I, I was adding some other components in the choice component but here <coughs> I didn't add anything so by default you can see default also there in Java so if some some conditions like one two condition will check it after that you will leave it for default ring right? so anything goes then it will go to the default so else part kind of thing right so here also default will execute it you are checking two conditions if the two conditions are not satisfying it will go for default here also same thing happened observe here so I'm trying to open the choice comp configuration as of now nothing is there guys I don't have uh, write any uh, syntax also here so when you can able to write it whenever you drag and drop the things inside the choice component so that time you can able to write it actually suppose here I'm just drag and drop the logger I just this is one logger this is under default I kept it one more logger now open the choice configuration now see it now we can write the syntax whatever the syntax you want to write it you can write it the condition you can write it but earlier before drag and drop the components inside the choice I can't able to write it here so you can clearly see when if this condition is satisfied this will go this logger so or else default maybe if you want how many uh, conditions you want to keep it you can keep it actually so that way so coming back to my example I'm just removing this thing okay so here coming back to my example so here I have a I have a this is a one set payload okay in the set payload what I written no username provided so it's a hard coded guys observe here so maybe here I kept the ash and square bracket but inside I kept a single quote this is nothing but hard coded right so you can so there is no difference between this this and that guys you understood right so that is a within single quotes you mentioned that is also nothing but hard coded okay. so next one is next payload is next payload is here if you observe here oh sorry earlier one movement might be same I return so here in this 
whatever the username I uh, user password that the username I captured and I displayed it in the set payload. Finally, default in the default, please provide valid username. So these are the three payloads I drag and drop there and again here in the choice component we'll see the conditions. Observe here guys we know that already some ML expression observe here message dot inbound properties of HTTP query params username equal to equal to empty suppose you are not enter any username here right so that time where where should it go it will go to the first one the set payload for invalid username that is i already drag and drop and again i implemented inside so that will route to that condition if username is not empty so then it will route to the so required valid username right it will go to the so second thing it will go the accordingly and then finally it's a default guys set payload for required valid username so that will whatever the based on the things you are passing right in the request so it will go accordingly on the associated associated payload i mean according to condition that uh, uh, i mean related payload it should execute and it will give the result okay so that is about this choice component guys so we'll see tomorrow we will try to so deploy it and i will show you the the mule valid expression the condition we'll see the true or false based on that it will execute it guys Okay, we'll see tomorrow and we'll close this mail expression tomorrow. We'll execute all the flows, almost six flows are there. I will we'll try to explain the file connectors and all also in this. We'll discuss tomorrow, guys. So uh, as of now, do we have any questions, guys? If there is no questions, we'll wind up the session today. We'll connect tomorrow, same time, 6.30. Okay guys, so we'll connect tomorrow, so we'll discuss same thing, I mean same meal expression, okay?